Bristol Zoo Gardens is only 12 acres in size. It's uh, the fifth oldest zoo in the world, the oldest outside the capital city. And in recent years, we've really struggled to meet the needs of the animals. As a consequence, the number of larger animals at the site has reduced quite significantly. And perhaps not surprisingly, visitor numbers have declined at the same time. And that's led to some really significant challenges. Now of this comes an extraordinary opportunity. So in contrast to Bristol Zoo Gardens, here at the Wild Place Project site, we've got 150 acres of opportunity to create a new kind of Bristol Zoo. The, the traditional zoo has always been done a certain way. Wild Place is different, we're trying to do things differently here. We're not just um, rehashing what zoos have always done. We're thinking actually, what, what do we want to take with us into the future? What does the zoo of the future look like? What do we want it to be? And we've got the chance to create that. I think it's brilliant. I think to be here where you've got the woodland and the open spaces, it's really exciting. And as he gets older, I think it's going to be brilliant for him walking around and again, experiencing things that he won't get the chance to experience anywhere else. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Wild Place Project Mining. The enclosures for all of the species that will be going up there will be sized according to the best practice guidelines for the species. But also, um, we're going to go over and above that. And we have an opportunity, for example, with our gorillas to build a gorilla forest within an existing forest. So we have mature trees that is really exciting. Those animals will have a chance um, to actually live in a forest environment rather than an artificially created environment. We've got um, the story through time, the journey through time of animals living in our woodlands. Um, and how we live I love forest. the enclosures. I think the enclosures are awesome. Bear wood, absolutely fantastic. And it's our first time here. Yeah, it is. So, so we'll be back. We're, yeah, we're very impressed. <laughs> Well, for us, this has been quite a golden opportunity, really. But this is a chance for us to completely look at it all from a, a, you know, a fresh slate and start from the beginning. And for us, the main reason is looking at why the animals are here. So it's being able to justify why we have them in zoos and why we have them in, you know, in breeding programmes, why we breed in them. And it's, for me, it's all about conservation. Here we go. It's such an important part, and to me, that's why I work at a zoo, is to raise awareness for the animals that we need to conserve. The new Bristol Zoo is going to be geared towards all of our conservation projects, what animals we have there that we're working with and have them at the zoo to raise awareness of our conservation projects and what we're doing over there. I mean, that's a great thing, and that's what all zoos should be doing. It's incredibly emotive to see animals really close up and to understand the need for conservation and the need to preserve these species and to listen a little bit more about all the field work we do. But the animals that we keep in captivity are incredibly powerful flagship ambassadors highlighting the plight of their species actually in the wild and what we can do with them. Which is why I've been part of a zoo for so many years because it's such a great way to do conservation. My personal trade secret, the one thing I've learned to never be without, especially in a rainforest, is, and this might sound a little bit odd, but wet wipes and talcum powder. And you use them in that order, then you can clean yourself, feel nice and dry and snug, and you get into that sleeping bag and you sleep like a log. We've tried very much to make it so that you feel like you are in Cameroon. Obviously it's helped today with the sunshine, which is absolutely brilliant, but we tried to make it work even on a dull wet day in November as well. Education at all sorts of different levels is so important because I've heard so frequently that people say, well, it's all about educating the children because they are the next generation which can look after the planet, but they're not going to grow up for 15, 20, 25 years and be in positions of power for much longer than that. We've got an emergency here. So yes, getting that, that early education in is really important to lay the foundations, but actually doing education at secondary, at HE level, and with the adults that are visiting us as well, and, and there it's very much about action. So this is what we can do now with the people who've got the ability to do that now. So across the age range is really important. All that is watching is nature. We do focus in on people that maybe are living in more difficult circumstances, people that wouldn't otherwise perhaps have access to some of these opportunities. Trees are like people swaying to music. 
we've got the spaces, they've got the people, let's link up and, and um, give them opportunities to come here that they wouldn't otherwise have. Um, it's been really, really wonderful and really rewarding. Watching children be sort of deeply engaged in discussions about um, the natural world, uh, which they do really, really well at Wild Place, uh, is just fantastic. And, you know, we just sort of stand back and it's just lovely that they get that opportunity. They do have a very odd shape. You can see how massive their lungs are. Oh, she's awake now. Okay, one, two. Really exciting thing about the new zoo is that we are going to get a purpose-built veterinary hospital for the first time. So within the Centre for Conservation Medicine, we'll have a, a teaching hospital. Our current facilities are okay, but they're very cramped. They're very small. You know, to have a facility where we can wheel in a gorilla if it needs care um, and have the space to really work on the whole range of species that we have will be amazing. When we put money into it, we became a founding family of Wild Place. And that gives you a feeling when you're coming round that this is something we've really helped to develop. And it's an, I think it's an incredible privilege to be able to do that. We've been a supporter of the zoo for 10 years and we've supported different projects and we share the, the sort of story um, of these projects that we support with our employees and there's huge engagement. I can be feeling a bit down. I start a shift, at the end of the shift I've got a big smile on my face and the world's a lovely place and if it can give you that and you feel as though you're contributing, what more do you want? I'm sitting on the maintenance building, as you can see behind me. We have a beautiful array of uh, solar panels and it's a beautiful sunny day for us to be making our own energy. Our biggest target is to be net zero by 2030 and to inspire the visitors that come to adopt environmental sustainability, not just as an afterthought, but at the heart of, of their lives. Gorillas really need our help. Their numbers have significantly declined in the last 20 years. Orangutans are really under threat, and there's lots that, though, that we can do to help, and that's the kind of message that we can get across at a zoo. Giraffe populations have decreased dramatically in the, in the wild, and here at Bristol Zoo, we're working very hard to reverse those trends. Ring-tailed lemurs of Madagascar are critically endangered. That's why the work that we do is so important. For me, actually, the wonderful thing about this new strategy is the combination of the visitor experience at the new Bristol Zoo, the opportunity for people who've been inspired by that to go on and learn with us, be it with their school or be it as a university undergraduate, for people, if they're really interested and hooked as a result, to go on and potentially work with us in the field as conservationists saving wildlife. And that's, that's our mission. Our mission is saving wildlife together. And it's the combination of those things that makes this organisation so special. It's what a zoo can be. 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 It's what a zoo can be.